Hello, and welcome to something special, maybe? This is, it may very well be a mistake, and it may not work very well, and I'm probably gonna do very poorly, but we'll, we'll see. I, I'd like, I, I have, my expectations are high, as you can tell. This is, uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Eye of the Beholder. We, the Lords of Waterdeep, have gathered to purge our city of an ancient evil. This is, we're going back to the past. Give call to the heroes of the land and let us choose uh, an adventure. Choose our adventures. Master, they think they have found a solution. Yes, we shall choose four adventurers to delve into the, the Underdeep. They, they sure do walk slow. Are you sure you, are you sure these guys are okay? We commission you to find the n nature of this evil and destroy it if you are able. Prepare for the dangerous journey. I'll be talking about D&D uh, &D in this series. I'll be talking about my experience with D&D &D and my um, general feeling about it. Um, maybe some of the recent controversy, probably not some of the recent controversy. Um, and uh, also just like kind of classic old school um i guess they're called blobbers blobber kind of rpgs um my experience with those are pretty limited begin your search below the city you gotta talk like uh you know a weird old school nerd when you read these you know we have them I'll also be talking a little bit about Forgotten Realms, which this is set in, uh, about Waterdeep. Their fate is sealed. And about um, Undermountain, which I don't think that this uh, this takes place in Undermountain, but um, I, I just want to talk about Undermountain because I think it's one of the coolest things ever in, in any fantasy world. Start a new party. We're going to be starting a new party. I'm probably going to be building this badly because I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to be building a fairly general use party. Um, we're going to have like, uh, well, I, I, I want to have a dwarf, but I'm going to have a, a human male fighter. We could do like a paladin, I suppose. Let's have a fighter. I'm going to be making a fairly new, a good, you know, we'll do like neutral good party. Um, this guy looks fine He's got AC 10. I'll talk a little bit about this later. I'm not sure he seems more better suited for uh, Like a, a, a caster honestly, he's got pretty good intelligence. He's got awful strength kind of want to reroll those Can we just modify those? How how hard can we go here? Um, we can go pretty hard actually. It seems like you can just like go ahead and do whatever you want um, Why don't we just like re-roll it? I don't want to be I don't want to be like very um, Min maxi, but I wouldn't mind. Yeah, that's a bit better. I like that a bit more. That's that's actually perfect um, All right, we'll keep that for the fighter uh, human fighter name uh... Oh God, I'm not good at coming up with names I kind of hate it. Um, let me see. Dark roast. All right. Dark roast, you're in the front. Now, uh, I think we want, we want like a dwarf. We'll do a dwarf male. I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. This may be, this may come across as problematic, but, um, I am going to be doing like the, the unfortunate trope of uh you know male fighters in the front and then we'll have like a female ranger and uh mage in the back you know what why don't we switch things around a bit as long as i'm acknowledging that it's problematic why don't we just why don't we improve on that we'll do a door female in the front and we're gonna make them a fighter cleric and they're gonna be good they're all gonna be neutral good um let's see what do we got here Nice. They had pretty good representation here, I gotta say. 
I mean, they all, you know, have a certain look to them for sure. But you know what? They, they, they look all right. What do we got here? Wisdom, constitution, not so much charisma. And I'm, I'm I think that fighter uh, clerics are constitution based. I have uh, on my other screen here. Um, I do have a clue book that's going to give us a little bit of uh, a clues. Diverse talents in the game. This character can use almost every item in the game. This is a I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking at half elven I want to I want a dwarven. I, I just there's something to me about uh, Dwarven clerics that just I love the aesthetic of that. I don't care that it's not min maxi. I don't care I like it. I think we should reroll that They have good wisdom. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure their wisdom is good. I can't remember. I, I, I don't think that con, uh, charisma is necessarily. I, I can't remember. Um, it's it's a, been a while since I played a cleric, if I'll be honest. Um, all right, this isn't like, the clue book is a, very much a guide and I'm not going to be using it unless I need it. So we'll we'll see if we can't uh, do without it. Um, I'm going to hope that we don't need charisma to make a decent um fighter cleric okay you're gonna be cold brew all right and uh in the back we're gonna have an elf male ranger neutral good some of these characters i'll say just like kind of look like nerds um which is great perfect uh ac 10 this is good. What do we want here? Um, ice cap. And then one more. We want a uh, probably a gnome female mage. Why not? Oh, I did it anyway. I did it, didn't I? Oh, we don't have a mage. Or is a mage not a thing? Huh? Well, why don't we make them a thief then? I know the cleric uh, fills the role. We'll make a thief. We'll see, because the thief can throw uh, daggers in the back. We'll make them. We'll make them true neutral. There's the there's a deviant, you know, slightly slight deviant. Um, there, that's fine. We they have strength, intelligence. Uh, we want that dexterity to be a bit higher. I think. There we go. That's a bit better. I mean, those are really good stats, but yeah, that's good. They have low charisma, like dangerously low charisma. Actually, let's reroll those one more time. I'd rather have some like a general base stats with a slight buff to dexterity. Those are just ridiculously good stats. I shouldn't keep those, but I'm going to. And your name is going to be. Double double. Oh, wait, uh, you can't do that. Dubs. All right. All right. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with this uh, adventures. Entering game. Please wait. Now, you might have uh, noticed I have... This is a, a slightly different setup from my usual affair. Um, in the bottom right corner is actually a separate window for me, and I have to make sure I can see that. Um, so... The main screen you're seeing is, uh, well, it's kind of, there's kind of several things going on, isn't there? We've got our, uh, what we're actually seeing. We've got our, um, troop, troop of, uh, adventurers and we can use them. We can use their weapons. Um, we can throw daggers. Um, I can't use a keyboard really. I mean, I can, but, um, there's a lot of shortcuts and learning them would be very cumbersome for me. Honestly, it's not WASD. I'm using the mouse to select a move around and you'll see in the bottom right corner and as I say that's a different screen for me that is the companion app I gotta say the uh the the love that this game has been given um to to bring it to the modern age is is really um quite uh, quite amazing um so y you're gonna be able to explore using that map in the bottom right corner um, and I think it also gives you extra information as well. I, I'm not sure yet. Uh, and in the top right corner of our, of our, um, you know, my recording there is just the cover art for, uh, the game. So that, you know, I have the beholder. 
So the window is quite small for me, I will say. I, I kind of wish I could have made it bigger, but uh, the companion app complicated things somewhat. We've got uh, lock picks. We're going to go ahead and give those to um, dubs. Oh, right. It, we have to click on the profile picture to get rid of that. We have a thing here. Something scurries deeper into the floor drain. You can also see what direction we're facing. There's nothing here. It's a, it's a, it, you know, this is an interesting first room. Because there's really not a lot going on. It's just like a kind of a, you know, a room you get dumped into. I'm going to open this door. And, uh, oh, you know what? Actually, before we do that, let's close that door. You can use this as a safe room. Um, what we should do is make camp and memorize spells. Oh, you don't have any mage able to learn spells. I don't know how to get a mage, but whatever. We're going to pray for spells because we have one cleric at the very least. And we would like to have things like bless. Um, we can have a look at, oh. Okay, hold on, clear that. Um, we want cure light wounds. Um, we don't have any level two spells yet. So we'll take two cure light wounds and maybe two bless. We'll see how that works out. So we just want to make sure that we have spells before we do anything else. Your party need, needs to rest in order to gain their spells. Well, that kind of sucks because um, that means we would have to eat food. And food is a thing we have to worry about in this game. So we're just going to go and do some combat first. I have accidentally unequipped that weapon. Okay, we, we did very well in our first combat. It does not necessarily always go that smoothly. Uh, something I always like to do is uh, when there's a corner like this, I like to rotate first and then strafe into it so we can maybe see uh, what we're what we can expect. You can't. There is real time combat here, so I can like um, strafe out of attacks. So um, yeah, you do. You, you're you're you are encouraged to uh, make the most of your real time. We have a secret button over there. You might have spotted that for a moment. Um, I'm I, I I consider myself pretty okay at puzzles. Uh, it's one of the few things I, I have a, you know a little bit of confidence on, but I expect to be humbled by this game to be honest because uh, old school puzzles tend to be fairly um, uh, what's the word ridiculous in nature i don't know like they're 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 they can be really difficult so i don't know what to expect oh well, we got a lot of a lot of lads here oh get back up dagger um we we got rid of our dagger okay there's a cooldown on uh on weapons So you, you want to, if you can, move away. They're going to get attacked before we get to move. It's, it's only fair, you know. But um, we can see we, we've unfortunately walked into a, a dead end. But that went pretty well. I did a little test uh, test run of this game um, just to see, you know, see if I, if I enjoyed it. And uh, I didn't play for long. I knew this was a game I wanted to play. So... Um, you know, it's I didn't I didn't want to spoil myself too much. It's a it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult balance I have to I have to run here because you know like I I need to I want to select games for um, that I think would make for for good streams or recordings, um, but I don't want to spoil myself too much on them. Um, so like, how, where do you draw the line? Like, when do you stop? playing the game in order to, you know, keep yourself blind from some of the stuff. I don't know. I'm going to try this door over here. Um, there's more stuff in on the, in that other direction, but I also happen to know, and this is why I don't like to play too much, that there is uh, some nasties in that direction. So I'd like to check out this area first, which I, I don't think I ever have. What is this? The slimy, smelly drain pipe reveals nothing. <laughs> I like it reveals nothing. It's, you know, what are you doing with that? Um, interesting room that 
seems to... Uh, there's like nothing in here. Is, is there any reason to come in here? Almost wonder if there's like a... Can you search for hidden doors? You'd think that there's a, something you could do in here. Maybe that's just another room we can hide in. I don't know if enemies spawn behind you in this game. Um, it's a, it's something I've complained about in other games. Is uh, I'm not a huge fan uh, when when a game will like spawn enemies behind you. All right, so we have our first like door that locks behind us. Dagger taken. This is uh this is like his belt, so we we put um we put the daggers on the belt so that he'll automatically re-equip. What is this? Commission letter. I, I I should have read there's some stuff I can read in the um the manual, which I, I think would provide a, a little bit of extra flavor. Um I don't I don't wanna stop now to do that, but I will do that maybe in the start of the next episode. I'm pretty sure there's some nasties over here. But yeah, there's our there's our throwing dagger animation. Really cool, right? I'm not I'm not mocking the game. It, it, for the time, it was really cool. Hmm, they're doing a good job of like. Oh, did we kill them already? Wow, we did really well there. Oh, wow. That went really well. Um, what happened to our other dagger, though? I, I think uh, Dark Roast had an extra weapon. I guess like, there's no reason I can't give him an extra dagger. Because um, then he'll have an extra attack that he can do. Okay, we got we got hit. These guys have very slow attacks, so we we can we can get away with quite a lot. There we go. Cold, cold brew has gained a level of experience. I will say picking up items is a little bit cumbersome. It's to be expected, but uh, you know. So this first level uh, of the dungeon is is supposed to be pretty easy, and I notice um in my my map it is uh it's scrolled down too far for me to see. Oh, I can actually I can oh I can shrink it. Wonder um all right let's let me let me fix this a little bit. There we go. That's a bit better. I might have to figure out a better solution for this in the future, but that's not bad for now. I like to try and explore all the corners just because I like filling in the map. Um, doesn't seem to be too much in here. We took a little bit of damage. The cold brew is hurt. She also gained a level. I'm not sure how we can level her up. What is this? Mage scroll of detect ma magic taken. I don't know how um, her food situation. Oh, it tells you how much how hungry they are. That's good. Ah, we have a we have a baddie. Come here, baddie. We have two baddies. They're not gonna come in here. So, okay, so what kind of, uh, what, what is my experience with these kind of games? Let's talk about that. Um, I hate to say it, but my most, my, my only experience with blobber type RPGs is with um, Legend of Grimrock. And I know that Legend of Grimrock does things differently, very differently. Um, it's very much a modern take on the genre. Um, but please know that it is basically my favorite game of all time. 
I, I, I love Legend of Grimrock so much. It's, it's kind of um, ridiculous. I would love to do a playthrough of Legend of Grimrock. And in a way, this is kind of a test bed because, um, you know, I want to gauge to, see, you know, see uh, how people um, are receptive to this. I think, I feel like my, my audience for this channel generally is like, enjoys the old school stuff. And so do I. I don't always, you know, like I, I am uh, kind of all over the place with my tastes. But I, I, I feel like this game would appeal. So um, I'm playing it partially because I've always wanted to do Eye of Beholder. I know it's a good game. It's heralded as like one of the most influential and uh, one of the best of its, of its genre. And I also, because I would like to do Legend of Grimrock at some point. Um, I am playing this to just to see uh, what the reception is, what what y'all think of me doing this kind of content. So, um, picking up all kinds of daggers. This is going well. Um, we have more daggers. We can we can give daggers. I, honestly, we should um, take these daggers and give them to our other hero, um, Dubs. I don't know what's what is Dubs. How can I check her character screen? Hold on a second. Oh right, that's how um, we look at this. Uh, their dexterity is actually very good, right? Because she's a thief. Why am I not giving her throwing daggers? Let's go ahead and give her throwing daggers. Now she has something she can do um, while you know while we're fighting stuff. That slimy, smelly drain pipe reveals nothing. Um, there's a pressure plate there. There's another pressure plate there. Don't like that. I'm gonna step on it and then run away. Interesting. Okay. So these are, I, 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 uh, I have much experience with this kind of puzzle. It's a pressure plate and the door is only open when the, we put something on the pressure plate. So we, we can probably like, we've already seen evidence of putting stuff down or picking stuff up. So we can put something on the pressure plate and then walk through. I swear I saw something else in here with me. Oh, it's a, it's a rock. Perfect. We can go back and we can pick up our ration and put the rock on the pressure plate. Nice. Uh, amazing that there's no baddies right now. I hope you don't mind me um, doing this strafing business into corners because it, it just it, it's a, a good way to like gauge your danger. Cage your danger. What a weird phrase. There's a drainage gate great here. So we are in the sewers right now. Um, we're not even like close to, you know, anything of, of note, but I, I don't, I don't know if this is like technically, um, under mountain. I don't think it is. Uh, there's a button there on the wall. We have some baddies. I could, um, I could back up because that gives us time to, um, recharge our, our cooldowns. Man, missing is the worst. All right. We got, we got a bunch of daggers. Um, actually those are, I think those are all my daggers. <laughs> Anything? Oh, we got some rations as well. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Um, so what is, what is under mountain? I mean, under mountain is, uh, well, look, we have to start with what is water deep. I don't know a lot of the history of water deep. Water deep has a very rich history. Um, and a lot of it, well, not a lot of it, but some of it is included in the manuals. And, you know, like I was reading through the manual 
and it made me like nostalgic for a time that i never knew you know um i i i'm i just sort of barely missed the age of games um uh, where you know like you actually got manuals and you got maps and you got all kinds of cool stuff and like it wasn't a deluxe edition you know like you know it really kind of makes me sick in a way when i think about it because it's like you buy a game like elden ring uh and i love elden ring but like you buy a game like elden ring and it doesn't include a map of the world like i know there's spoilers there a little bit but like uh, just a general world map you know, just something to, just something like a treat for your eyes, you know? So much work and effort was put into that. Let, 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 let's, let's celebrate that a little bit. But, um, you know, you look at the manual for Eye of the Beholder. Oh, I see there's um two switches on the left and right side here that I missed. Is there really? Oh, oh, shortcut. Huh, okay, so there are hidden doors. If I hadn't looked at the companion map and seen that there was a switch on the wall, I probably would have missed that completely. Now, I know you could say, like, well, um, you should have known there was something there because, uh, you know, it's like a dead end that didn't, you know, go anywhere. But, like, there's been a few dead ends already. Okay, we need to we need to rest up. This is, we're getting kind of close to death here, at least for cold brew. Cold brew is almost dead. Um, is there any more? There's no more baddies here. I don't know what that is. What is this? Dart. We could give a dart to dubs. We'll, we'll figure this out later. Um, we definitely need to rest up. Why don't we, like, head back... Um, yeah, I started talking about Waterdeep and then I got, like, immediately, I, I got kind of, uh, diverted. Can we go in here? Oh, this door isn't open yet. Huh. Interesting. Um, well, why don't we just, like, head back to this room and then do a rest? Rest party. Someone is still injured. Rest until healed? Yes. Um, I mean, okay, so Waterdeep is like a major city in Forgotten Realms, and that's really the short and long of it. It's got a lot of history. Um, Forgotten Realms has got a long history. I, I know this is a controversial take, maybe, but I consider Forgotten Realms to be the official world of Dungeons & Dragons. Um, maybe that's not controversial, but maybe it is controversial in that even I, like even the fact that I'm saying it's controversial. Um I, I find it a little bit strange because, like, you know, what is the official world of D and D, right? Like, you, I think that for most people, you have a, a an idea, an image in mind of what D and D is, right? You're fighting goblins, you're fighting orcs. Maybe there's an underdark. Maybe there isn't an underdark. Maybe that's new. Um, uh, you know, like wizards, dragons, of course, dungeons, of course. Where do the dungeons come from? You know, we're like the dungeons have to come from somewhere, right? Um, so, you know, there, I think that, uh, there's a, there's a kind of interesting, I don't know how to put it exactly, but like, I don't want to say dissonance, but it's, it's like, where, where, where are we getting this stuff? Where, where is the, you know, where do goblins come from? Um, where is any of this coming from? There's magic. Um, there's, there's, you know, maybe there's warlocks. I don't know. Warlocks seem kind of new to me, but then again, I mean, I've, I've heard of many old school games, including warlocks. Warlocks have, have tended to be evil, you know, uh, now they're a playable race or not race character or class. Um, now you can be a uh, part dragon person and that's not even a big deal you know T uh, at one point dragons were all evil uh so you know there's a lot of a lot of stuff um to consider with D. &D. 
I like Forgotten Realms, and I think it that I think that it is a good or a campaign setting to consider as um, you know the official D and D world because it is so classic. Like there is some extra stuff in in Forgotten Realms that doesn't maybe fit in your classic or tropey uh, version of Dungeons and Dragons, but I think that that's good as well. It kind of mixes things up a little bit. Um, there's definitely a lot of spells and artifacts and places that d do not fit uh, necessarily in those uh, in our you know D and D conventions. I guess this would have been a nice room to uh, rest up in. I'm just uh, I'm just trying to check all the boxes before we move on to here. So, but you know, like I just I appreciate that you know Forgotten Realms really does kind of check all of the, those tropey boxes, but then it introduces some interesting things as well. Uh, whoops. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and back up a little bit because I want to. Um, allow everyone to do their stuff that worked out really well uh i keep forgetting the name i i, I had a sort of an argument with with a friend recently because we were talking about dungeons and dragons online which is the official dungeons and dragons mmo and uh, i'm going to try and put this up as early as i can so i i will encourage you if you've never played dungeons and dragons online uh, and you have any any um, desire to, I would recommend two things. First of all, there's a um, a code you can uh, use on their website. I know this is this is not a sponsored, I promise. Uh, but there's a reason I'm bringing this up. It's kind of important. Um, I think that Dungeons and Dragons Online is actually a good game. I think it's actually really good, and I, I say that as someone who's played it very recently. Um, it's not a typical MMO, and I think that's what makes it actually pretty good. Uh, yes, there is just like grinding monsters, of course. It's it's an MMO, but there's also a little bit of a methodical work in it as well. You you have to search for for traps. You can search for secret doors, and um, it's you know like it is slightly more methodical than your standard MMO. It's not just like run into a room and crank on goblins you know uh which i i really appreciate that it's it's a bit more thought thought filled um why don't we give that a uh, shield to dark roast and we'll just uh put that dagger away uh, so anyway there's a code i think it's co the code is just dungeon crawl if you put it in uh like make an account for dungeons and dragons online and then go to their uh website or, or just go to like support and put it in you get like a ridiculous number of adventures that prior to now were uh very expensive to all pick up and i i highly encourage you to take advantage of that now even if you have a passing passing interest in dungeons and dragons online because um that that is actually kind of an insane value so what is this what what, what did that do Classic, what did the button do? Ah. Oh, okay. All right, so that's what that does. That opens that door. Uh, I think that I've explored pretty much everything else in this dungeon. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? Cobalt room for entrance. Ah, cool. Um... I really got sidetracked a couple of times here. Uh, I definitely, like I say, encourage you to, to check out D&D &D online. Um, but yeah, I had an argument that... I, I always thought it was strange that D&D &D online did not... It, it, it takes place in some kind of weird campaign setting. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, Ember Dark or something. Oh god, let me, let me look this up real quick. D&D... Uh, &D. really gonna it really bothers me not remembering these things ever on it takes place in eberron and i had an argument because i was like why does it take place in eberron if you don't know what eberron is um 
Eberron is like a weird steampunk fusion Dungeons and Dragons. Like there's airships and tech and uh you know it's it's weird and i i'm not saying it's bad i'm not saying it's bad at all uh i'm saying that it's a strange like it, it's a strange setting to put D, D, your official D, D mmo in because it like comes with all of this extra kind of steampunk baggage on the page with this symbol, find line six, enter one word. What? What? Is this like the anti-piracy thing? Oh no. Uh. I have to find, find on the page with this symbol. What, in the manual? Okay, I'm, I've got the manual open. I'm scrolling through it. Give me a second here. Ah, I, I am seeing the symbols. Let me try. Okay, I found I found the symbol. Find line six, enter word one. Uh, okay, line one, two, three, four, five, six species. Going down. Wow. We got, we got, not only have we got classic, you know, old school role playing and blobber mechanics, we've got old school piracy protection. Fantastic. Oh man, it really takes me back to the days where you had to. I don't know, do some classic hacker shit. Like I'm in and, and then you put the shades on in order to like copy a floppy. Don't copy that floppy. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to end it there. I do want to talk about Undermountain and I, I got distracted a lot, but I'm trying to do a few things at once. And I'm, I, I hope you're enjoying this, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, but uh, I think, you know, getting to a new floor is a good place to stop for now. Uh, if you are enjoying this, then, you know, hit the like button to, to support me, support something new. And, uh, it, you know, let me know if you're a um, fan of the old school kind of RPG gaming. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Eberron. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I, just to put a cap on that, I just thought it was so strange to put it in, set your official MMO in Eberron uh, instead of like... Um, uh, Forgotten Realms, but Forgotten Realms has only recently been kind of more like uh, officially merged with D&D and um, you know, I, I think that was kind of against Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro's will because uh, Forgotten Realms has always been owned by, I, was it Ed Greenwood, I think his name is I really don't want to get his name wrong because uh, he is he is a very important figure yeah i think it is ed greed one yeah who uh I, I mean other people are always involved and i don't want to like attribute the entirety of forgotten realms to one person but um it, basically forgotten realms as, as i understand it has always been a independent venture and um i i think that wizards of the coast and hasbro have more or less tolerated it um, and only recently has it become a bit more officially accepted um, against their will. They're like, yeah, all right, fine. You you happened to have made one of the biggest, you know, campaign settings of all time and it, every, it beloved by our entire community. So I guess we'll allow you to exist. And it's one of those things that kind of cropped up when the whole uh, fiasco of like um, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro trying to update the uh, OSR is like, hey, um, you know, like Forgotten Realms only exists because you had a, a bit more of an open license. But anyway, we'll get into the, that stuff later, maybe. Um, but yeah, hit the hit the like and the and do the comment, and do all that stuff, and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.